Well, the first library I encountered was this rural library in, out in the country in Louisiana. And it was kind of almost hysterically picaresque in that, you know, it was a log cabin and it had, you know, wood floor, no air conditioning. Uh, I'm not even sure it had electricity, come to think of it. And uh, it was right up against a bio. There were alligators that we had to be wary of. And that's where I first saw where the wild things are, and it changed my life. When we travel, um, I've gone to a number of libraries in like Paris and uh, the Bibliothèque, whatever, and you know, things like that. But yeah, check out. Went to, went to a library in Prague about a month ago that was amazing. And uh, ancient books, all hand uh, illuminated by monks. And, and you know, I'm just a sucker for books, so I'm going to go where there's piles of them. And that's where libraries usually fit the bill. Do libraries play an important role in the creative process? Well, I keep writing books that have libraries in them, so I suppose they do. Um, it's some of them are just you know inf I'm still working on the uh, Morris Lessmore, the fantastic flying books of Mr. Morris Lessmore is all about a library and a man who who gives his life to books and they return the favor actually, and. Um, and then another book I'm working on after that has a man who uh, has this amazing personal library that follows him everywhere. Library, library budget cuts, you know, when I hear about that kind of stuff, I turn into black and white and I become a villager from Transylvania bearing a torch. I want to hunt down the monsters that are doing that. Okay, so yeah, like a book's gonna jump out <laughs> and and kill you, or strangle you, or ruin your kids' morality, or something. I mean, I just give me a break. You got to give kids and people just a little more credit to think that they should be able to read something on their own and draw their own conclusion. That it's not like the book sears its words into your syntax or whatever your ganglions, and that you're suddenly changed. I mean, you have an open mind. If there are ideas in a book that appeal to your intellect or your emotions or whatever, you should be able to experience that one way or the other. If you're going to try to ban books, then you're trying to ban thought, you're trying to ban emotion, and you're trying to ban things that make the country what it's supposed to be, which is open for discussion. So it drives me crazy when I hear about, I, like especially Huck Finn, that just drives me nuts. Like the best book, the best American book ever written, the best book about race ever written, and you ban it because of a word that is offensive, but is the very use of that word that makes it, gives it its power, and the renouncing of that word in the course of the, of the text of that book is what makes it great. So if you go, you can't read this book because it has this one word in it, then you're missing the whole point of the book, and you're missing why the book's been around for so long. So that's just dumb. I'm thinking of books as a sort of app and combining them you know with what you can do with an iPad or any of those pads and it's very exciting and I think it's gonna it's gonna like augment what a book can be it isn't gonna destroy a book it's just going to give it another venue and another method of telling a story so I'm playing around with that a whole lot I have my first app came out two weeks ago and it's based on a book to be called The Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lessmore. And then I'm working on my Guardians of Childhood series, which is 10 picture books, mm, how many novels? Six. Six novels that chronicle the sort of origins, formations, and how they do their jobs of the icons of childhood, the man of the moon, Santa Claus, Tooth Fairy, uh, Easter Bunny, Jack Frost, Mother Goose, and eventually probably like the so the Sandman's in there, eventually uh, Father Time, and a couple other of those folks, and working on movies of that, and a movie of another book called uh, The Leaf Men, that's a book I did a few years ago.